Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime! It's the best you've got for a row. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Hello again. It's MRN's Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength and by Grunt Style. We are so glad you joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we have got a great guest lineup joining us on the Sage Fruit Guest Lineup Board. Lance DeWeese and Gio Selzy, a pair of the big winners at Williams Grove this past weekend. As I mentioned, Aaron Everham alongside. How are you? How's I'm, things? I'm good. Very good. good. Yourself? Oh, fantastic. Got a little <laughs> got a little dirt in my beer, you know, if you will. A little sprint car racing, so I'm good and uh, good to go. So uh, excited about it. Lots of big races still coming up. Yeah. And um, lots of good stuff happening, that's for sure. Uh, let's start off with our classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Uh, and we're going to talk uh, about the Natty Open Gio Salzi and Lance Deweese, um, one not a shocker at all and one a shocker. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, just on, I, I think the thing with the with the Gio Salzi win was the reaction of like uh, Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell. They're like, what? Huh? Yeah. Are you, are you, what? Huh? What are you talking about? Yeah. I don't think it was a surprise that he won his first outlaw race. I think it was a surprise that he did it at Williams Grove yeah, I think at so the too. National Open. I think so, too. So we'll talk to Gio in a little bit and uh, Lance Deweese as well. Uh, how about this? Uh, we've been really raving. Carson Macedo is one of those young rock stars that's on the tour that is really making a name for himself. Running yep. this year for the Arctic Cat All-Stars. Also picking up the ride in the uh, Jason Johnson number 41 car. Um, his brother, Cole, got his first 360 win out in uh, out at Hanford, California. How about that? That's cool. And when I saw a younger brother, I was like, well, Carson's well, I know. not that Yeah. Old. Um, I mean, it's like, how much younger do we have him out there? So, uh, really cool. So, uh, kudos to uh, Cole Macedo. Also in California, uh, Silver Dollar Speedway, Chico, California, the Fall Nationals. Kyle Hurst got the win, and this was a great race. I mean, it was like eight lead changes. Yeah. I mean, Brad or, or, uh, Cox is in there, Justin Cox is in there. And then how about Dominic Selzy from the B-Main yeah. to second, just rolling that car? Uh, what a great race. And then there's the IRA bumper-to-bumper sprints, Friday and Saturday night in Sheboygan <laughs> at the uh, Plymouth uh, County Fairgrounds, okay? Um, Friday night, Scotty Thiel held off Tony Stewart. Saturday night, Smoke had him right where he wanted him. He was going to get that one that got away on Friday, uh, Billy Baylog, last lap, last turn. Oh, Go right by him. I can't imagine oh, how he's too Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, Billy Baylog got the win. And the point battle between Scotty Thiel and Jake Blackhurst was amazing. Jake Blackhurst, uh, on Saturday, Scotty Thiel finished fourth. Blackhurst finished fifth right behind him, and it was only a five-point wow. margin. So that's a uh, close one. IRA, of course, uh, and a, a tip of the cap to everyone with the IRA, man. That's just a great, great tour of racers up there. And uh, the race they had there, they had a, a non-wing sprint car show with them, and there was more sprint cars at that race than any race in the history of Wisconsin. Oh, wow. I mean, it's I just like, that. yeah, it's just unreal. Uh, growing, just just yep. growing, just really, really neat. So kudos to everyone there. And uh, race winner Scotty Thiel, uh, Bill Baylog, and uh, Jake Blackhurst, the champion of the IRA bumper-to-bumper sprint cars. We do need to step away. When we come back, a guy that uh, had a significant deposit to make at the bank on <laughs> Monday morning, Lance DeWeese, after winning the National Open. He joins us next. The American Sprint Car Series is back for its 27th year. Whether you're catching the Lucas Oil ASES National Tour at tracks like Williams Grove, Skagit Speedway, Knoxville Raceway, Lucas Oil Speedway, or any of the six regional tours across the United States, you'll find the ASES Nation racing at a track near you. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram today. Then see the full schedule, track-by-track history, updates, and more at ASCSRacing.com. For over 50 years, drivers in Sprint Car, Midget, Micro, Modified, and even Dirt Lay Model have taken a checkered flag on weld racing wheels. Legendary drivers like Joe Saldana, Carl, Mark, and Steve Kinzer, Doug Wolfgang, and countless other racers have trusted weld racing wheels for their superior strength and lightweight construction to finish ahead of the competition. With 50 years of race winning engineering and technology, American made weld racing wheels are designed and built to withstand virtually any abuse you throw at them. Weld racing, proven speed. 
Sage Fruit is a high-quality grower, packer, and shipper of Washington State apples, pears, and cherries. Sage Fruit believes in sprint car racing. Sage Fruit has been a proud sponsor of sprint cars for the last 15 years and a proud partner of Wing Nation for the last three years. We love sprint car racing, and we are there for our sprint car fans. Sage Fruit works hard to deliver an exceptional eating experience. We value our relationship with sprint car fans and appreciate your continued support of Sage Fruit. Ask for Sage Fruit at your local grocer. This is Shane Stewart, and you're watching MRN's Wing Nation. I'm with Steve Post and Aaron Everham. Ever. Thanks, Shane. Ever Welcome back. Ever. It is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. We're going to go to the Weld Racing Hotline, but uh, Aaron and I are sitting here chatting, and <laughs> we're just just marveling at the, the, the record, this guy, the, the career record, the record with the Dream Team. I mean, this is unreal. Aaron, what, what Lance and those guys, it's just, it's, it's insanity. And the only people that don't realize it's special seem to be those guys. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like true. everyone else in the world's like, oh, okay, you know. I mean, amazing. It really is. Oh, their run has been fantastic. Well, and Lance's career, it's yes, all together, absolutely. not just so, with the Dream Team. Well, let's bring him on. The World Racing Hotline is joined by that wheel man for the number 69K, fresh off from a trip to Victory Lane at Williams Grove in the National Open, $56,000. Lance Deweese is on the line. Hello, Lance. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hi, Steve. Hi, Aaron. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> We're doing fantastic. Lance, does this, how, how does this, how does this, how, what drives you? What, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here, it's like, what, it, what is your drive that you just keep going out and, and doing this? What, what is it that keeps motivating you to just go do this? Because it is, I know you, you downplay it, everyone downplays it. It's so amazing. What drives you? Winning. I mean, it's plain and simple. Winning It's not. It's not the dollar amount. It's not, you know, you know, it's just winning. Um, that's kind of what always driven me. Um, I'm kind of a little different than probably a lot of people. I'm very low key, mild mannered, but the drive's internal and, you know, Donald's the same way and Davey's the same way. They just want to win. And, you know, when we don't win, they, they go work just twice as hard yet to figure out why we didn't. And, um, it, it's just a really good, unique team that we're involved with. And, one of the things that helps us is we all been around so long that we've seen everything. We know you know, you're going to have your bad nights and you're going to have your good nights and you have to kind of take them both the same almost. Well, it's incredible. <laughs> Lance, in your 92nd career win at Williams Grove, your fourth national open win, but this was certainly an emotional win. Your victory lane was really special. Talk about how much this one means to you. Oh, it meant, means everything to me. Um, you know, as everybody knows, we lost Greg Hodden in a racing accident, you know, a week and a couple of days ago now, and um, it's just you know, he was a great racer, but he was a better person off the racetrack. And you know, I didn't know how to really deal with it. I was asked to talk at the service, and originally I agreed, then I had to back out just because I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And then I um, I made sure Sherry knew why I couldn't do it, and um, and um. I wanted to win this weekend so bad, probably more than I ever have in my life. And it was first time I ever, that I can remember a long time, maybe other than when I first started, that lining up for the feature, I was physically almost getting sick just because I just wanted it so bad. Just for her, the help of her healing and to honor Greg. And, yeah, he he's one of those guys that would, you know, if I won a big race, he wouldn't be one of the first guys there to congratulate me, you know. And it just it was just a really good friendship that we had and you know, we didn't you know, we didn't go out and eat a lot, you know, we have, but you know, it's just one of those deals. He was always that guy that, you know, whatever happened on the racetracks kind of was left on the racetrack and you, you could talk about things afterwards. I had the one of the things, Lance, that and I don't know if Aaron and I've talked about is how many times I get into a visit with Hodnet where he starts talking engineering and and I'm texting her and saying you should hear this. Well, what are they saying? I don't have a clue. And I actually <laughs> was in one of those where you and Greg were in the trailer one time, and I'm just like odd man out as far as understanding it. But but I understand and the respect you two had for each other. I I get exactly what you're saying. Just watching that that one conversation I had, I think it was during a rain delay somewhere along the way. Um, to go a little bigger picture, the overall atmosphere in central Pennsylvania, Lance. You've been part of this uh, the, the, this posse outlaws, outlaws posse deal along the way, obviously losing Greg. What was the overall atmosphere like? I know you put an exclamation point on the end, but what was the weekend like just being part of that? 
Well, the weekend was great. I mean, just the fan turnout was unbelievable. It's been, you know, we were talking about a little bit of uh, the Crates team, a little bit about the crowd that was there on Friday night and Saturday night. And, you know, it's probably, I'm going to say about 10 years since I've seen a crowd like that. And, um, yeah, that was great. You know, you know, hopefully they were coming, you know, not just because of Greg's passing, but they were coming anyhow. Mm-hmm. And it was just an honor to be involved with everything that was going on there. And, you know, the both nights when we lined up and did the four breaths with how the whole grandstands had the, the phones out with their flashlights on there, you know, lighting up the whole place. That was just neat as heck. And, you know, just I've never been part of anything like that. And it just – the whole weekend was just great. You know, the weather was great. And just – it was just a great weekend, I think, for everybody involved. Lance, talk a little bit about the race itself. I mean, you're, you've always been fantastic at Williams Grove in general, but you've been known for running the bottom, especially in that 69K car. But you actually seemed to find something in the middle of one and two that got you by Broxy or Foss, and you weren't so much glued to the bottom, at least in one and two. Yeah, we – um. We've had a knack over the years. Um, like when I won my one with the 88 Joe Harz, um, we got run in the middle of the racetrack and really good in one and two. And um, drove by Dana Lasowski doing that. And, you know, we've been really good all year there. And um, we we actually were really good on Friday night just with how fast everything was. It was very hard to pass. And we just um, kind of got messed up in a heat race. And, you know, we had to qualify through the B main once you're in the back with the dirty air. It, but at those speeds, it's just very, very hard to pass, and we had a little bit of issues with the car. But I knew early I didn't have to run it as hard as I needed to just because I knew we needed to keep tires for the whole 40 laps. And that's probably one of the advantages I have over um, people like Brock and some of these other young guys is I know it's 40 laps. I know it's not 30. So that place will change and also eat tires up. And we were – pretty happy i was running the bottom early trying to save the tires not overheat them or anything and could kind of hang with him so i thought once the track slicked up a little bit more and the top slows down a little bit we would be all right and i actually found the the good middle lane by accident which that's normally what happens and um <laughs> was really good in there and um he got by him and it was pretty good after that and you know we we probably could have maybe ran some quicker laps than i did at the end just because of I wanted to make sure I had some tires left if we had to do a restart. Uh, unbelievable oh how you manage a race. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it is, it, it, I know it comes second nature to you, but it's something that uh, is just, just amazing. Hey, I want to go off the track here, okay? Now, Kyle Larson tweeted you, well, you go out and you win these races, and Larson's out here running. He was tweeting you about golf this week. Have you golfed with Larson, or do you just compare notes on, on clubs and stuff? No, we actually... Um... I can't remember when he was up here racing when it was. Um we actually golfed together. Um nobody really knew that. Um um him and our um his engine builder and us went out golfing one day and um had a lot of fun golfing with him and um and he told me about he was gonna go get fitted for PXGs. So then he made the comment about, you know, since I won the fifty six thousand I could afford it to PXG. So it was neat to see him tweet that, you know, you know, he, he's great for a race and, you know, he's a young talent that's unbelievable talent. And, but he's just great because how he goes about it, you know, he just loves his dirt track racing so much. It's unbelievable. And yeah, you know, it just, you know, it just helps everybody involved with, you know, it brings recognition to our, our sport that we all love. And, you know, I appreciate everything he does to help our sport. And, you know, I don't see him stop doing that anytime soon either. So it's, it's going to be great to watch him mature as a racer. You know, he will be a cup champion someday. I don't I don't think that's even a doubt to me mm-hmm. just because of his ability to drive things when they're not 100% right. And, and, you know, hopefully, you know, he got into the next round. So hopefully, you know, he's going to some tracks that are probably pretty good for him. So hopefully he can put himself in a good position the rest of the year. Yeah. Starting this week at Dover, he's pretty good there. That's for yeah. sure. Hey, who uh, real quick, who won the golf game? <laughs> who was better at golf? I'm a little bit better, but he just he just took up the game. Um, yeah, I mean, he told me two or three years yeah, ago. Yeah, he is new. Yeah, he ha- yeah. he 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 has a really good swing. Um, but he's young. Uh, us old guys, we our swings are not pretty, but they are effective. Um, but he has a really good swing, and I know him and Denny Hamlin play a good bit of golf together. And D- Denny's supposedly a really good good golfer, so it was just neat to play with him. And you know, hopefully, we'll get to play sometime again. You know, 
when we're out about and you know but yeah he he was fun to play with you know we don't talk racing hardly we didn't you know very little we talk more golf than racing so that's great and that's what we all use golf for is kind of get away from the the racing end of it that's fantastic fabulous fantastic uh lance congratulations uh, i'm sure we'll talk to you down the road thanks for the time congratulations again today thanks for having me on anytime guys there we go lance Ruiz. Just, He's amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think the last person on the world that thinks that he, he thinks that it is him. It's yeah. like everyone else just is like, you He's know, so I mean, nonchalant about it. Yeah. You know, not only was he talking about conserving tire early in the race, like, which like, to me is still beyond like anything I could ever do, and it's like way beyond. But then he talked about at the end of the race, just making sure he had a little tire left if there was a restart. I'm like, I don't know uh, if there's many other sprint car drivers. Maybe shots. Maybe there's a handful. There's but, a handful, but it is it is the handful oof, that's, uh, that's that handful will it will be or is on display out in turn three or turn two at Knoxville. Yeah. So I mean, it's unreal. Hey, we need to step away because another guy that won at William. Grove, Gio Selzy, he joins us next. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa is open year-round seven days a week for race fans to celebrate sprint car racing. With over 30 original open-wheel race cars and sprint cars on display, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame, movie theme, and the world's largest selection of sprint car merchandise. Visit our online store at SprintCarStuff.com to view all of our sprint car merchandise. Or when in Knoxville, stop by the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, located in the sprint car capital of the world, Knoxville. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, pick up five quarts of Mobile One full synthetic motor oil for $28.95 and get a $10 O'Reilly gift card by mail. Protect your engine from sludge and wear with Mobile One full synthetic motor oil at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in designing and manufacturing purpose-built application-specific hydraulic cylinders with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger, crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. AggressiveHydraulics.com this is Terry McCarl, and you're watching MRN's Wing Nation on MRN.com. Welcome back. It is MRN's Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, Aaron Evernham and Steve Post. from um, These two had something in common. They were in Victory Lane <laughs> at um, Williams Grove. But from an experience and, and, and perspective about the opposite ends of the spectrum, joining us now on the World Racing Hotline, Gio Selzy. Hello, Gio. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Good to be here. How are you guys? Uh, we are fantastic. What's it like to be the youngest guy to win a World of Outlaw race and the youngest guy to win a sprint car race at Williams Grove? What's that like, young man? Uh, it's pretty cool. It sure made washing and, and servicing a lot easier this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I like that perspective. perspective. Oh, gosh. Gio, talk about the race. Uh, it, the track was a little heavier on Friday night, but you passed David Gravel, the, the previous winner. He's won the National Open twice. Um, uh, just talk about the emotions during the race. Yeah, I mean to have a have a car that fast all night from qualifying to heat race to dash and then to feature um, you know, in the first few laps of a feature you know if you're going to be any good or not and and I could tell how I hung with him you know fairly easily not not pushing too hard and and to have a 27 lap race which really isn't that long even though on a half mile um you have to make your decisions pretty quick so um you know on that late restart I think there was like you know 15 to go or so I knew that was that was the time I had to go. I, I was, uh, you know, two or three feet closer there than I was at a time before and, and split him, and, and that was kind of it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, so during during the course of the race, did you did, well, you say you had a good race car. Did you move around much, or did you did you just find a really sweet spot early on, or how, how did you manage that, that racetrack? Even, even though it was a little fast, how did you manage it as far as finding finding that sweet spot on the track? Yeah, it's so hard with the outlaws, even with the all stars. You know that caliber of of of, uh, of drivers. Whenever you whenever you move around and you start searching, that's when you get passed. And and you know I feel like my car was good enough to I, I kind of slid myself a little bit and and worked the bottom and moved around. I could tell David was moving too. It didn't seem like he was comfortable where he was and, and didn't feel very fast. So he was moving the top and and the bottom and three and four. And and like I said, I kept sliding myself in one and two and really didn't lose any ground with him. And and like I said, whenever you whenever you get moving and searching, that's when you lose spots with the outlaws. So. Um, at that point, kind of like I said, I knew I was good enough to, to challenge for a win, and 
and and like I said, to, to be able to move behind him like that with with a guy that good, like you said, that, that won the national open twice is, is when you know your your car's rolling. Yeah, and, and the driver's yeah. rolling. Uh, Gio, talk about the reaction. Social media at the track. Uh, awesome video of your dad watching. We, we've seen on social media, but I saw awesome tweets from people like Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, some of what we consider uh, some of the greats right now coming up, and, and they were blown away by what you did. Talk about what all of it meant and how you processed all of it. Yeah, it's cool to see how many you know texts you get from people and, and how many people congratulate you. Shows you kind of you know. That you made friends. You really haven't made the enemies. I feel like everyone was happy for us. No one really, um, no one was like, "Damn, those guys won. They don't deserve it." So it was cool to to get Bernie's first uh, first outlaw win and my first outlaw win as well. It was it was cool, like I said, to see that many people happy for me and and to just uh, to see you know how they view a win like that. You know, same way I do. We just had Lance Deweese on, and of course, Lance is Pennsylvania posse, and it's been a rough ten days in Pennsylvania or or, or twelve days in Pennsylvania. We understand that. For you as a young racer. What was the experience like for you going into such an emotion-filled weekend, knowing it's a big weekend without all the emotion? What was it like for you as a as a young racer walking into Williams Grove and 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 and, and doing what you did? Yeah, I mean, even being just in in the state of Pennsylvania, you go to a to a, a sheets or whatever, and and the people at the gas station, you have a race, you have a race shirt on, and say, "Hey, you guys race or whatever." It's just. They might not know anything about racing, but they're aware of you know what's going on, and that that is so cool to see how everyone is involved in it and how how big it is in in Pennsylvania. And like you said, walking in there and and obviously I looked up to Greg very much, and and being friends with Lee Stoffer, who obviously worked with Greg, and um you know it was a terrible thing, but but racing with him in Knoxville, a little bit I got to, I just I saw how talented he was, and and even in his age, he was he was so so good. And and you know the last few weeks they've had the 27 lap features to honor him, and it was cool to win one, just you know kind of an icing on the cake there. Yeah, for sure. Gio, uh, your year has obviously been fantastic, and it seems to just be continuing to climb on the on a good trend. Um, talk about the year your, yourself, and and you know what you have left maybe on the schedule. Yeah, I mean we've been so fast everywhere. You know whether it's the Outlaws or All Stars or whatever series we run, I kind of feel like we've uh, we've been due for a win. But in reality, I've only been racing with the Outlaws for a year, and the All Stars same same thing. So um, funny, one of my friends or Bernie's friends, Jamie Miller, said at El Boris, like man you've been up front, like you need to win one of these, you know, just joking. I'm like, dude, I know I've run third and I've, I've had some top fives that have just been there, just have never been able to, uh, to close the deal. And, and finally at Williams Grove of all places, you know, with the outlaws and, and a prelim on the national open was, was un- unbelievable. Unbelievable. Indeed. That is for sure. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again about wins down the road. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win and uh, continued success as you roll through the balance of this season. Thank you guys. There we go. Geo Selzy joining us here. Uh, uh, you know, differently amazing <laughs> yeah. than Lance DeWeese, but equally amazing. Yeah. And you know, he's 16 years old. Well, I've been racing the Atlas for a year. Okay. So that was 15. Yeah. Like It's like I said earlier, the whole reaction, is, huh? It was just, <laughs> you won at Williams Grove? I mean, and again, just kind of, well, it made washing the car easier. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how many first-time outlaw winners got their win at Williams Grove. Is he the only? Yeah. I mean, well, I'm sure you know. There's, there probably was some a, back in the posse, day. Yeah, yeah, a posse guy like a, like yeah. you know. I mean, but but you're right. And and how long has it been since someone was a first-time uh, outlaw winner? Well, Brock Zierfoss did it last yeah. year, but again, that's a posse guy. Yeah. Not a not an invader, even though Geo's not an outlaw. Although they could have claimed. Oh boy, here we go. Oh boy, uh, we need to step away. We'll have more in just a moment. <laughs> Hey guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue. BlueChew.com brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know that they work. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they can work up to twice as fast as a pill so you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Blue Chew is prescribed online and shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person doctor's visit, no waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when using our special promo code RACING. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E Chew.com, promo code RACING to try it free. Blue Chew, it's the better, cheaper, faster choice. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. 
Hard, dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. Front match value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection. There's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Looking for custom race wear and embroidery? Do you want your race fans to represent your race team with trendy original apparel? Contact Classic Ink USA, the new standard in custom screen printing and embroidery. Located in Greater Pittsburgh, Classic Ink USA's professional staff utilizes state-of-the-art facilities to transform your ideas into an attractive wearable piece. From custom track swag race wear to trendy quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink handles it all. Find out how you can get started. Contact Classic Ink USA screen printing and embroidery at the track and on your back. Oh, oh, O'Reilly. Defend your vehicle from harmful elements and restore shine with Armor All Original Protectant. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today and pick up a bottle of Armor All Original Protectant for $5.99. Renew, revitalize, and protect your vehicle with Armor All Original Protectant. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I'm Danny Holcraver, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Thank you for joining us. It is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar. We're loaded up today. Uh, Mike Nazaruk, okay, who has that um, who has that uh, uh, Thursday Night Thunder Hall of Fame with the, yeah. with the Munchkin car. Dick Akins, um, a couple of our own personal Hall of Famers, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. <laughs> birthday today, and Ashley Strummy's birthdays oh, today. Oh, Big Wing Nation birthday. Yes, indeed. How about that? Uh, we need to meet at the Iowa Beer Bus, I think. <laughs> um, Sarah Fisher has a birthday on Thursday, J.J. Yaley on Friday. We forgot to wish Lance DeWeese a happy birthday. That's oh. coming up Saturday. Oh, he's going to go run for twenty five grand at Lincoln. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, and then Emmett Buzz Barton and Ken Coles. But uh, tomorrow will be the birthday of Chuck Hulse. 2012 inductee into the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, born in Southern California at eight years old. He's out running a jalopy around the, <laughs> the, the, the side roads, a Model T around the side roads. Went to war, came back from the war, very successful in CRA and USAC, multiple wins, multiple championships. Went into USAC, top five races at Indy in the 60s, retired in 1968, got in the real estate business and continues to plug away. So happy birthday to Chuck Hulse, a 2012 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Uh, mentioned I uh, had a good weekend and got a little uh, got a little sprint car dirt. Uh, went on with my friends at the Carolina Sprint Tour. And uh, on, on Saturday we had, on our MAV TV show, we had the McLean family. Yep. And we talked a little bit about Carolina Sprint Car Racing. Yes, I know it's not Pennsylvania, it's not Ohio, it's not California. I will say this, though. Uh, they're developing this 305 program around here, a program that two years ago had four or five cars. Yeah. Friday and Saturday night, 22 and 23 oh, cars. Oh, that's good. Now, some cars from Pennsylvania and Jersey and Connecticut came down uh, with the with the Race Saver 305 deal. But um, I'm telling you, to be at a track in North Carolina and see a full crew yeah. of sprint cars is pretty yeah. cool. And to know that it's growing is And the growing, thing. exactly. So kudos to Mike Sellers and everyone. It was the Robert Perry Memorial. I uh, finally need to make this announcement. Oh, I wish we had a drum roll or something <laughs> because it's World Finals Week coming up, and we have not one but two special broadcasts. Wednesday, October 31st, we are going to team up with our friends, Rip the Fence, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Tyler Burnett and Dylan Welch, they do this traditional sprint car, midget, silver crown, Rip the Fence podcast. Those guys knock it out. Yes, they do. They're phenomenal. They do a great job. So we're going to team up with them and do a special show at the Keith Coons Give Back Classic. We're going to do a pre-race show at Millbridge on Wednesday, the 31st. And then on Friday, and we've done this one a couple times, uh, we'll be at the World Finals. We'll be at the Pavilion by ZMAX Dragway, part of fan appreciation event during the afternoon. So uh, I, I hate that we're talking about World Finals because that means the season's rolling along. But um, at least we're at least we're we have about, something to do. Yeah, yeah. Special shows. <laughs> exactly. So uh, coming up Thursday, Richie Tobias is going to join us on Wing Nation Weekend presented by Hepner Racing Products. And on Saturday... Chase Briscoe in studio, yeah, the big, big winner, winner from the Rovo. Yeah. yeah, talking Rovo, talking NASCAR, <laughs> and talking sprint car racing, too. Um, just a good dude. That is for sure. So all kinds of great stuff coming up here on the Motor Racing Network. Sincerely appreciate Lance DeWeese and Gio Selzy for joining us. But more important than all of that, we appreciate you joining us here 
on Motor Racing Network for Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Wing Nation has been brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Wing Nation can be found on demand at MRN.com, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.